This world and all its problems, injustices, and inequities can wear you out. It can make you weary. It can load you down. And Jesus said in Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and take my rest. Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. Hey, thanks for joining me. I got to share some thoughts with you that the Lord just was putting in my heart today. You know, I was reading in 1 Corinthians how that church there in Corinth, in that church, the Christians there in the Corinthian church were so impressed with themselves, with their church, their gatherings, their services, and impressed with the moves of the Holy Spirit in their church and all their giftings, that they were actually becoming pretty ugly spiritually. Like they were growing and miracles were happening and they were really into the gifts of the Spirit and all that. But they also had some really bad stuff going on in their church. But they were so excited about their church and their services that they just kind of ignored the stuff that was contradictory or that was worse than what was going on outside the church, where people who didn't even know the Lord were able to tell that the Corinthians were messing up and really had problems. Like in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, I can hardly believe the report about the sexual immorality going on among you, something that even pagans don't do. He said, I'm told that a man in your church is living in sin with his own stepmother. I mean, this is going on amongst other adultery committing and whatever other kinds of immorality they were doing, and they were still all puffed up about how cool their church is. They were excited about their gifts, and they were excited about their church and how cool it is, and they were excited about the wrong things. They were all thrilled and impressed with what their church had and what it could do and all of its giftings and how awesome their services were, but they'd forgotten what being a Christian is about, what church should be about. They had all these events and great services with miracles and amazing moves of the Holy Spirit, but you know what? There's more to being Christian than that. Then he says in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, and when I became a man, I put the childhood ways behind me. God wants to keep growing us. He wants to keep growing us spiritually and maturing in the things of God. And no matter how long you've known the Lord, no matter how mature in him you are, there is more growing, more learning, more transformation that the Lord is bringing to our lives. He's working in us. He's growing us. He's transforming us. He's changing us. And there should always be a new, fresh appreciation for him, a new love for him, a new and fresh love for humanity and for life and for walking in the spirit and casting off the old ways of our defeated flesh life. You know, I decided years ago that I refused to become one of those Christians who started off excited and initially would grow and move forward for a few years and then just plateau and stay there stuck in a rut because I know some Christians who do that and it just doesn't seem to bother them. But I don't know how can they enjoy their relationship with God if they're not growing in him and growing close to him. I can't imagine how it would be to be going through the same old problems, same bad habits, tripping over the same things, making the same mistakes over and over again, year after year, when the Lord has new mercies and new blessings day after day, like the Bible says, they're new every morning. If you'll believe it, if you'll receive it, and I know one thing, this world and all its problems, injustices, and inequities can wear you out. It can make you weary. It can load you down. And Jesus said in Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and take my rest. Take my yoke upon you. Work with me. Learn from me. You'll learn that I'm meek and I'm humble, and you will find rest for your soul. That's what he said. No matter who you are, how important you are, however weary you are, however problematic you are, you need rest for your souls. And Jesus said this to people who were broken, people who were fallen, people who were empty, as well as people who were rich and people who were famous, people who were powerful. Whosoever will, whosoever will come to him, that's who this invitation is to. That's who this promise is to. Anyone who wants to know him, anyone who's tired and weary, but who's ready to learn and ready to grow, he says, come to me and we're going to walk through this life together. This is the God that we serve. 
We can get consumed with all the problems in the world. There are more problems and situations than any one of us can understand or comprehend. And they can make us weary and burdened just hearing about them. There are so many changes that need to be made. And my prayer is that you will be consumed with becoming part of the solution in your world, in your circle, and let Jesus change your life day by day. So many people want to change the world, and the world definitely needs changing. And the biggest change, the most significant change we can make, is to first yield to the Holy Spirit of God and let Him change our heart, change our attitude, change our temperament, change our entire lives, and let Him give us the vision we need, the heart we need, the love we need, and let Him work through us. I want to talk to you about some errors and attitudes that we find among a lot of believers. The first one is that, The world's going to end one day. There's nothing we can do about it. So let's just ignore it and forget about it. Praise God. They don't care about any of the issues that even people who don't know the Lord are concerned about. And the Bible says, though, in Philippians 2, verse 15, that we need to be blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and perverse generation. He said, in which you shine as lights in the world. We need to live godly lives. We need to be as the children of God in this crooked, corrupt season that we're living in. We need to let our lights shine into the darkness. Jesus said that we are to be letting our light shining. It's not just talking religion. He said it's doing something. He said in Matthew 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father which is in heaven. Part of growing into spiritual adulthood is taking part in God's redemptive plan on the earth to set an example, to honor God, to honor his creation, to honor people who are made in his image, and to let our lives shine forth so people will see our lives and be able to tell that there's something beyond just human behavior going on here. They will recognize the difference that the Lord is making in your life and that you're working to help other people with. So the first mistake is that there's nothing to do. Jesus paid it all, which he did when he died on the cross and purchased our salvation. And then, though, just chilling out and not having anything to do with lifting the burden of people who are still hurting and struggling without God, without hope, and without help in this world. The second mistake that many believers make is, it's all about me. Guess what? It's not all about me. It's all about Jesus and what he wants to do in our lives. He is Lord. We're not. When the Apostle Paul was talking about how he grew from being like a small child, how he had to grow from that and put away his childish attitudes, it's about realizing you can't always have exactly what you want when you want it, but you need to grow anyway. And that's why he talks about reasoning like a child. He said, I used to reason and think like a child, but then I grew beyond that. You know, a child wants their way all the time. And as soon as you say no or wait, the child gets mad and says, you're mean. And they pout and cry and whine and complain. And they want their way or they're going to make everybody miserable. You know, I know grown men, by the way, who are like that. God is saying we need to grow beyond that. Yeah, we want to be happy. We want what we want. We want to be entertained. We want to have fun all the time. And if a church isn't fun enough for us, we'll leave and go find one that is. But that's not God's plan or desire for us. He wants us to grow and to mature and to learn what it is to walk in the Spirit. We need to want what He wants. And when we understand how good He is, we'll always want what He wants. Because what He wants is the best. Part of growing is learning that We serve God. He doesn't serve us. He doesn't owe us. We owe him. You know, if Jesus Christ never did another thing other than die on that cross and save my broken life, he's done more than enough. I'm not lost anymore. I'm not broken anymore. I'm not angry and self-serving anymore. And he's still growing me. He doesn't owe me anything. And another part of growing up is that we begin to understand that even when things don't go our way, it's still the goodness of God operating in our lives. Like, Sometimes a relationship doesn't work out, and that special someone doesn't work out. And then we got all mad at God and upset, and we don't even realize that many times that's God delivering us. Or maybe he's delivering them from us, maybe. We need to know God well enough that we can accept that he loves you enough to sometimes withhold some things that we think we need because he knows they won't be good for us, or sometimes it's just that we're not ready for them yet. 
Like when I was about 10 years old, I used to like to sit behind the steering wheel of my dad's car and pretend I was driving. You know, I'd lean down and press on the accelerator with my foot and move the steering wheel back and forth and make engine noises. But guess what? I was not ready to drive. I just thought I was. But if my dad had given me the keys to his car when I was 10, I guarantee you I wouldn't be standing before you today sharing these truths and principles from God's word. I would be in heaven already. And as we get to know him better, then we begin to want the will of God in our life and want what he wants for us. And the things that used to tempt us will not have the same pull on us that they did when we were just starting out with them. That's part of growing out of being a child. Also, who we listen to and fellowship with changes as we grow. In the beginning, I just wanted to hear how well I was doing for a new believer. But as I began to grow, I started looking for people who would tell me what I needed to hear, how I could grow more. And sometimes it would sting a little bit, but that's what I needed. And sometimes I wasn't too excited about what the Lord was wanting to do in my life, the changes he wanted to make, the things he wanted me to leave behind, put down, or to drop from my life. And I had to choose to keep drawing near to him anyway because his thoughts are higher than my thoughts and his ways are higher than my ways. And a lot of people are like that. They get to know the Lord and they serve Jesus, and they worship him mightily and powerfully until he begins to want to make changes that they don't feel like making. He tells them they might need to quit hanging out in some of the places they're hanging out or to move into a different circle of friends or drop some of the things they've been doing and lay those bad habits behind. And then they get mad, and they just stop right there, stuck in a rut, and they won't grow, they won't move ahead. Just like with Jesus' first disciples, his closest followers, his closest friends. There comes a time in your life where your flesh does not want to do what the Lord is instructing you to do, and your flesh absolutely wants to hear none of it. And at one point, when Jesus had multitudes of his followers turning back, they quit following him, and that happened more than once because he would say things they didn't want to hear. And on one occasion, in John chapter 6, verse 67 and 68, Jesus asked his disciples, are you going to leave me too? And Peter said, where are we going to go? You alone have the words of eternal life. So number one, don't be just a spectator. Get involved in what God is doing in this world. Number two, Keep growing in the Lord, even though you might not enjoy every single part of it or every single thing the Lord wants to bring into your life. Number three is this. Don't let this world set your values, your causes, your agenda, or your direction. There are too many things going on for you to be involved in all of them, but you do need to be involved in the things that the Lord sets before you and the Holy Spirit leads you to be involved with. I mean, there are issues that as a Christian, you ought to be making your voice heard and you ought to be making a stand for. And there are others that God may be calling other people to, that, but that's not what he has set before you to do. Sometimes it has to do with what is your gifting? What do you know? What can you lend a credible voice to? What's your experience or your training, your education, your capability? What's your heart? And there are some things you definitely need to be speaking out about, not backing down on. Racism is one. There is no excuse for it, and no one is any better than anyone else, and no one is better than you. Don't just sit there like a bump on a log if you're somewhere and people are saying or doing things that are racist or are in any way victimizing someone. Open your mouth and take a stand. Another one that's big with me is hunger. Food is getting more and more expensive, and yet so much of it, they say, they actually say about a third of all food produced in this country ends up in the landfill while people are going hungry or trying to live off of ramen noodles because they can't keep the lights on and also eat quality food. For me, for the worship center, that's huge. We feed hundreds of people each week and we've been gifted with stores and managers that will donate meats and breads and other foods. And we're determined that no one should go to bed hungry, at least not in our sphere of outreach. Homelessness, that's another one that Christians need to be involved with. Affordable housing, shelter for people so they have a place to go out of the weather if they need it or if they want it. Some people don't want to. That's their business. Poverty, there's so much wealth, so much waste. We can do more to eradicate poverty. There's so much that different Christians can and should be involved with. Healthcare that people can afford. Education that works. So many things. 
And you might say, well, those things were worldly. I want to tell you something. Jesus fed the hungry. He commanded us to take care of people who are in need. And right down to the point that if you have two coats and you see a brother or sister without one, he says, give them one of yours. And, you know, you start preaching stuff like that, people are going to call you a socialist. Well, there's worse things they could call you. But it's not socialism. It's called having a heart, having compassion. Even as Jesus had when he saw the hungry and hurting multitudes and did something about it. Or what about James chapter 2, verse 15, where it says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save him? That's verse 14 and 15. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. One of you says, Go in peace. Be warm, well-fed, God bless, but doesn't provide for that person's needs. What good is that? This is an area where God would have us put away our childish things, it's mine, and move into a spiritual adulthood, looking out for others, rather than wanting people to look out for us all the time. In other words, we should be the shoulder they can cry on, rather than us looking for shoulders for us to cry on. I mean, all of us are here to seek and save the lost, and if we're not helping and reaching out, then we're fighting the wrong fights. I believe we should all be activists as Christians because God's love is active. And God has called us to stand in the gap and bring his presence into those situations. We have to keep finding ways to bring the love of God, the light of God, forgiveness of God to people who feel unloved and like they're walking in darkness and unforgiven. And I can tell you this, the world is not going to stop hating people and hurting people and dividing them, and it's not going to stop causing pain. And that's why we need to bring the presence of God to every situation we're in and start acting like we're bringing the presence of God there. Then number four, stay faithful, whether you feel like it or not. Keep loving, keep praying, keep worshiping, even when you're hurting, and it seems like it will never stop. I had to decide that I'm going to serve anyway. I'm going to pray anyway. I'm going to worship anyway. And I'm going to grow anyway. Even when I can't see or feel what God is doing, I know he's still working. I know he's still God. I know he still cares. Even in my season of storm or my season of dryness or sadness. And you might be going through something right now. And it might feel like it's the rest of your life. And I promise you, it isn't. What you're going through, you're not going through it alone. What you're going through is not who you are. That valley is something you're going through, but it isn't you, and it's not where you're going to live the rest of your life. Like David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou, for you, God, are with me. And I hope that encourages you. I know God gave me this message for somebody. And our prayer, our team is praying for you, for all who watch these videos. And don't forget to share this with someone. And also, remember to pray for me. I always need it, and I always appreciate it. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org or you can text to give at 301-637-0777 It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.